Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that's Connor and we're going to talk about The Expanse, Season 1, Episode 3, it's called Remember the Cant, full spoilers for the episode as always. Connor, what did you think of this episode? I think this might have been my favourite one yet. Cool, cool. Uh, I liked it a lot too. I, I don't know if it was my favourite, I think I might still like the, the spectacle of the first one just a little bit more. But I get that, but this one actually furthered the characters on a much more meaningful level for me. And I, I yeah. felt like I got to know a lot more of them on a, on a much better level, which, while the spectacle is great, this means a lot more going forward. Yeah, I think, obviously, this really felt the effect of the, the can't being destroyed, and we see the, the effect on Ceres and how that, you know, the OPA, we learn a lot more about them, because we heard them mentioned in the last episode a little bit, but in this one we really get a sense of, oh, it's this organisation of sort of, kind of extremists but not quite yet like they might be up to no good but we're not really sure it's like a political alignment kind of thing i like that obviously we speculated the the last episode that it might have been a third party altogether like mm. some rogue entity and they're at least aware of that there is this other entity it's not just oh who is this that's not the mystery it's why why now what are they doing it's, uh, it's different it's more interesting i think i think the parallels to the the middle east are very apparent yeah and and this, especially when there were, when the the Mars Martians, it's weird saying Martians when they're the humans, but it, it's accurate. Like, it is, but it's just weird. To, I'm going to have to get used to that. But when the Martians are interrogating Nagata and they're like, oh, "Are you a member of the OPA?" and she 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 has a line about, "Oh, I must be a terrorist because I'm a belt or something." Like it was just, oh, that's really. Yeah. I can feel the parallels of like, you know, yeah, which it's... is it's what sci-fi really is good at is you you take the the social issues the themes of today's world and you you put it into an extreme example and you explore it yeah. through other versions of the same things and i like that it's That's what good cool. sci-fi always has been and i think it's a good thing for this show to have because it has a clear message a direction you get what this story is trying to be already just because you know what it's referencing yeah absolutely i i agree with that so, OPA is led by Jared Harris, who I was not expecting to pop up. I have no idea what accent he's doing in this. Couldn't tell you. I, I mean, it seemed... It, it wasn't annoying me. Like, it, it didn't feel like he was going in and out or anything like that. I just have no idea what accent it is. It's a very thick Mars accent. <laughs> well, he's not Martian, though. He's OPA. Well, yeah, but OPA... Maybe they come from, like... Like they're, they're people who came from Mars, Earth, the, the belts, where, and then they went to this this thing. They, they are driven there rather than it being a place that they come from. Yeah, obviously the tensions, because the message that Holden recorded, Blaming Mars, got out, and it, it basically starts riots on the on series. Every, everyone starts, the unrest comes, the, the police are all told. They're not called police, actually. I should remember the name of the police force. It's like the Helix something... I can't remember it yet. I haven't got it yet. Sorry. Yeah, but, it, but it's, it's, it, it, everything has a new name, so it's hard to remember all this stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll pick that up for next time. But they're, they're told to all... like Just, just kind of like watch the... the sh- not, if you can call them streets. It's weird calling them streets again because they're on a space station, but they're out and just like keep things calm. There's a lot of unrest, yeah. and, they're, and they're all charged with just going around and keeping everything from kicking off, which doesn't work. Riots happen anyway. Th- things. Yeah, it's kind of like, look... The water's boiling already. Just try not to let it spill over the side of the pan. Given all this tensions about uh, water restrictions, that was a very apt metaphor. I know. I thought it was quite clever and witty of me, but I'm not giving you that much credit. I think it was an accident. It Happy was. Accident. Well, it wasn't. No, it was, it was very clearly thought out. Uh, sure, sure. But it, and it ends in a, a shock death, actually. I did not see this coming. I thought because because we got a couple of more scenes with uh, Havelock, Miller's partner, because he'd, be, he'd been around the last couple of episodes, but he was just a side character. We didn't really get to know him. Whereas in this, we, we know that he's going to be a prostitute. We've seen that before, but we see what he's actually doing with her. It's not just a, a sex visit. He's there learning something from her, this uh, meditation Dance. language Lang- yeah language maybe yeah maybe language that's a that's a probably good guess but the, the way he's training that from her he seems to like her you know mm. not, not 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 in the same not just as a prostitute he seems to like visiting her and yeah as a more, person and, and yeah an intimate way and she seems to like him as well and we, we get some scenes with him and he goes off to try and protect a different part of the neighborhood i think it's where the, the brothel is actually that's where he goes to go and protect because he's concerned about that area and 
the extremism catches up to him because he's an earther. They say that he's from Earth and this tension's rising and these OPA members, which it's kinda like it's it's not like neo Nazis, but it's it's kinda it's more of an oppressed society rather than one that sees themselves as better. Even though there's elements of that in the speeches and stuff, but it's it's kind of that element where there's this angry mob that like just grab him and kill him because he's from Earth. It's this racism, yeah. this extreme racism. And I was oh, how's he gonna get out of this? I was thinking, yeah, he's not dying, he's the main character. And then nope, skewed, he's dead. <laughs> I think it does a couple of really important things. Because obviously his main role for the first two episodes was Exposition. Yeah. Exposition. Which so them killing him off now tells me okay, they trust us enough to just go with everything now. We don't need to be handheld the same way. Yeah. But also, I thought, we, we like you said, we were past that because we got scenes with him. So it's like, okay, now they've got past the exposition, we can have him yeah, do it, something. It was believable that, you know, you wait to episode three or four to start building some of the side characters. That's just normal. That, that happens. Yeah. And I completely bought that they were just starting to build him up and they were giving him this connection to this person and it was the same thing with Holden and his girlfriend in the first episode. They did a good job of making me think, oh, this is going to be a character going forward. Oh, no, they're dead. But they made yeah. me care a little yeah. bit because they give him just a little, just enough character, just enough of a, yeah. and a connection to someone else that I cared when they died. And it goes I agree. To, it does that classic thing at the end where you end on a down note, you go to credits with no music. And just yeah, like it's the, that, that same kind of silent tone, yeah. the, the, the electrical hum or whatever it was. Yeah, just the, kind the, of the generator behind them or yeah 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 it was something that just kind of permeates the the credits yeah. it's which always a, a great touch which is effective i'm not i'm not dis- i'm not uh criticizing it i'm just it's a very no, classic it's, thing to it's do. probably the longest i've left the credits before obviously stopping it going on to the next episode yeah because you're just sitting there in shock it's like because you think he's going to get out of it you think he's either miller's going to show up at the last second and break it up or someone else is going to intervene but no he's dead he's hanging there and you see that he's hanging there lifeless so there's no way that he's because yeah, we've we've seen that they can reattach limbs, new limbs to people and things like that. We know they can cure a lot. Of, you know, medicine's a lot more advanced. But no, he's he's lying there. He's he's lifeless. He's just hanging on this on this. Yeah, steer. and it is just very contemplative at the end, where it just it just sits on it and then cuts to credits. There's nothing. Just, just lets you think about it for a minute. Yeah, it shows you how extreme extreme this has gotten. It kind of stops it from being. Oh, it's just the theories of politics and you know racial colony tension between the, the three factions this is how severe it is this is how real it is this is yeah it's, it's already at this point yeah it's dark and we're this yeah. is where we are already so this is which you know going back to the you know holden and his crew that are on the mars ship now so we, we see mars we see they're all in uniform and they have a very strict disciplined ship it's very clean not as clinical as earth but more military which we've, again goes back to what we've heard that they are more of a a military organization and it tells us a lot about them in, in that sense. We find out that the pilot, uh, Kamal, he he used to serve under Mars, and that's why they treat him differently. Yeah, because he was discharged honourably, yeah, as, so- as he points out. So it's like, well, he has, you know, veterans' respect, essentially. Yeah, they give him a uniform, they give him something to drink, they don't put him in one of the small cells, he goes straight into the, the larger one, where they all eventually go to talk. But he gets immediate access into that. You know, have a shower, clean yourself up. You're one of us. You get to you get to do that. It's like we, we've got to treat you like a prisoner to some degree, because that's what you're here for. But we don't have to treat you badly about it. And do you know what I think this episode did more than anything? Because we have all this mystery of Mar- Mars thinks that one of them is responsible for everything. They think one of them is a sleeper agent. And I think this episode did a good job of making you do. Oh, is Nagata secretly OPA? But then it also made me go, well, what if Holden is? Yeah, we just and we the, don't know enough about any of their backgrounds to discount anyone. Because Mars, the, the, the interrogator narrows it down to those two because he sort of rates the, all, all the ones off for various reasons. Because either they're not smart enough or they're not dedicated enough or they're ex-Mars, ex-Martian military, you know. And it gets down to them and I started thinking about it. And by the way, I'll, I will point out, yes, I don't want to just brush over the fact that he was eating this weird bubble of liquid thing that was doing something to his pupils i think i think it was like making them pick up on their their yeah because like, it was it was like a lie detector almost where he, he could really notice the the way they were blinking because it was when he was asking nagata about who sent the message who leaked the the information so they had to go and check the ship it's when they got to hold and you seen her blink and he knew like he was really attentive if i had that. to speculate i would say it's some sort of drug 
that makes time seem a little bit slower. Mm. So, you know, so you can like, you, you take it in at a, a slower pace. So, Because, correct me if I'm wrong, the very first shot we had, you know, the woman on the ship, and she opens the bag, and it was two of these, right? At, at the time, I just took it as water, but you may be right. I thought it was water yeah, as well. Yeah, but but then, then when I saw this, I was like, oh, okay. Was that what that was? Which then begs the question, what did it do to her? Like, how did that help her in that situation? Because because I took that at the time as it's what she's really weak because she's not had any water, and this gives her a bit of strength to. Yeah, this was like a water ration. That's what I thought it was until I saw it in this. Is it almost like question a it. steroid then? And that's how she kicked through the door because she was no, she, she yeah. gave her the strength, the actual physical strength to do it. It makes more of an actual stimulant kind of thing. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yeah, it could be, yeah. So it's not bad, but yeah. So I was what I was getting to with Holden though is like. We, we took it at face value that oh, he's kind of a nice guy and it's his morals, it was his wanting to do the right thing that made him send that message so that they'd have to go and check it out. And he sent the, the message that he recorded and broadcast last time was because he wanted people to know the truth. But then all the other motivation we find out, not only from the, the Martians on the ship, but also the political stuff on Earth, is that whoever's done this, whoever this third party is, if it is the OPA or not, their intent is to start a war with Earth and Mars. Mm. and the Bellers. So the idea that, you know, he is the one who sent the message, he's the one that insisted to go out looking for it, and then he's the one who recorded this message blaming Mars that could ignite a war. I'm like, it could be him. He could actually it not could be the be. nice guy. And I think that would be really interesting because then it would make me say, well, maybe he is a nice guy and the OPA are doing it for a good reason, perhaps, which then makes you go, well, what's the difference between him and the guys on series killing Havelock? Like, what you know what levels of of this are there yeah she's just an extremist like them but but it, it would introduce a lot of new moral quandaries for the show to explore it would especially since so far he seems like kind of the main character almost but this would flip yeah. that on its head and that mm. would again it would be interesting would, would nagata be the true hero of the team in a, in a sense perhaps or, it would also um, make me think that it, you'd have miller chasing after him perhaps yeah, but what I loved about it though is that in in the scenes of the interrogations, when when he, they're bringing up both in both scenes with one with Holden and one with the guy, you see the doubt in their eyes as they're thinking about the other person. Mm. Is she okay? And then you see it in her eyes, like, wait, he did send a message. Is he implying that he did this? That he's actually secretly. Re it's not just that he's guilty by accident of the, everyone dying on the ship. It's that he intentionally did it. And then there's the idea that maybe they both are, but they don't know who the other one is. Oh god, yeah, that's getting that's getting crazy. <laughs> it's possible territory. if they're sleeper agents. Yeah, and then tying into the stuff on series, specifically with Miller going after, you know, Jared Harris's character, the the, the OPA and interviewing and asking about this girl and he you know, I don't know who that is and he's a weird accent, I can't do it. You know, he's like, I don't know who that is. It's very fragmented that accent, isn't it? Very fragmented, but he's very much it sounds like he's like a political person who's like not wanting to comment on it, so they're just dancing around it, and he even Miller even says that. Oh, you've not actually answered any of my questions. You're, yeah, you're pretending you are, but you're you're just dancing around them. You're 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 blowing me off with these stock. He does feel like a classic politician in that sense. Yeah, well, we, we Which... have that scene where the the two guys in the OPA are going to or try to refuse water to the Martian, yeah. and he comes out and says, "No, no, no, treat them like you want to be treated. If we yeah, actually animals, otherwise, we'll, we'll yeah. do the same to us." Yeah, yeah. So it's not just about being right it's about being better but then that if they are responsible for the the nuke in the ship then that completely makes them a scumbag and hypocrite and whatever it else. does but then it, it makes me go back to say you know like the cloud analogy is like for stories like this is is almost star wars because yes we we see them as a you know rebels they're doing the right thing but from say the empire's point of view they're, they're terrorists in this, we're seeing this from Earth and Mars, where they're a terrorist, but maybe they think themselves to be uh, similar to, to a rebels. I see where you're getting at with that comparison, but I'm going to point a few flaws in it. Okay. Here, I don't think there is a clear right. I think that I think the point of this show is that it is more well, yeah. morally. Yeah, unclear. yeah. I was just saying the idea of you know seeing themselves. Whereas in Star Wars, I think it's very clear that the Empire is evil. It's not just a perspective thing. Well, yeah, but. Is the is everyone in the Empire or is it just the guys at the top? You know. Okay, sure. Not everyone. It's it's kind of like if you're looking at Nazi Germany, sure Hitler's evil, but is every single person who was exactly. forced to 
get and a I think that's, for them. I think it'd be interesting to show to maybe that direction. Who would? Because at the minute it feels like okay, these are the ones. They're they're the bad guys trying to start a war. But why? Maybe it's more interesting. Well, yeah, we don't really know the true motive. I mean, obviously we could speculate that it is just as simple as, oh, we want vengeance because they are... It could be. But I feel like it is more interesting than that, that it is more deeper than that. But I, I think you're right. I think the moral questions will be raised throughout and we'll see characters, whatever side they align with, maybe question their allegiance and flip depending on what the leaders decide to do and what is the right thing and wrong thing. And yeah, I could so. also see our, our groups of characters coming together and creating a group independent, essentially. You know, working, you know, to try and solve the whole thing against all three of them. But obviously Miller's aware. He realises that the ship that Julia was on is the one that was the, the lure, the trap for the, yeah. the can. So, you know, the plots are kind of linking together. And even though there's stuff on Earth... The characters are very separate. They're talking about that incident. They're talking about, oh, the can blew up. Who did this? A big plot point from Earth, of course, is we meet the Earth ambassador for Mars. Mm. And our character, uh, Avasarala, uh, I'll, 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 I think I said that right that time, she tricks him. They're, they're kind of old friends, and she plays him a little bit, and she leaks the information that, some, that the OPA might have Martian stealth technology. And we find out that the Martians never gave it to them. Because they all immediately check. This is how their logic works. Is the Martians immediately go, wait a minute, have we lost some stealth technology? And they, they all... Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they look to see if anything's been stolen or missing or given away, and it hasn't. The fact that they're checking means they didn't willingly give the OPA anything, so they're not working with them. Yeah. It's clever. Uh, it is clever. And even the... And it gives them some character for her as well, because when she goes and speaks to the ambassador again, he's like, he tells a story about when she was a kid and her, her and her older brother or her father or whatever it were playing cards and she, the whole idea that she would do anything to win she would change the game in order so that she could win that was the analogy because they played yeah. cards and she turned it into a race when it wasn't a race and that got her father killed and he's worried about her so she's like I don't want to play with you anymore Like I'm as much as yeah my career might be in the shitter now I'm glad that I'm kind of not in this game with you because it's just going to end in heartache and misery essentially yeah so I like that. And a small touch, he was gay. Uh, I like that that was just a, a thing that was there when they were at dinner with them as a couple. Yeah, I like it when shows do this and it's not a big deal because it feels more natural. Yeah, yeah it, it just cuts to them in dinner because she's invited him over and her husband's there and he brings a guy in. I, I, I wasn't, you know, and it becomes really apparent just as they're leaving and he sort of touches them. It's like, all right, okay, they're a couple. It's fine, it's natural, it fits in perfectly. And it's nice, nice to see again that someone in such a high-ranking position in this world is that. Yeah. So clearly, we have other prejudices. We have you know Earth, Mars, and Belters, but the classic ones of skin color and sexuality might be gone. They might not be a factor as much anymore. We've shifted to these. Yeah, new... it seems that way. Judging just off yeah. these, you know, these these two people here. Yes, yeah, so that all plays in, and it makes you feel like the can't go blowing up is affecting all the plot lines, even though the characters are all very separate at the moment. I do like it because I was perhaps not expecting them to merge this early on. I was thinking maybe it could be a good half a season. I think it does but, a great thing where it makes the world, the whole universe feel connected but big at the same time. Yeah, it's this thing where it also gives perspective of how big an event this was. Because you've got, like you said, like you've got the top people at Mars, the top people on Earth, like all focusing on this one ship. And it tells you that this was important. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... It's doing good stuff in that sense. Uh, another, another small point about the Martians. I actually really like the the captain or the commander of the, the Martian ship. Mm. I think she played it differently because obviously the grunts were very kind of just aggressive and by the book and whatever. Whereas she came in, she she brought Holden in. It's like, you're going to recant this statement because you couldn't make a war. Like She's just concerned with the bigger picture. She's not shoving her power down his face. She's just... She this. does kind of feel like the equivalent to a Vassarala on Earth where mm, they, they want to play games, they want to win, but neither of them want to outright war. Like, none of them want that at the minute. Yeah. And you feel like it's inevitable at this point because we're, we're having a show about it, so it probably is going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, and, uh, and that makes it all the more tragic when it does happen, though, seeing all these characters fighting so desperately not to have a war, but then they're going to have to anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, shows continue to be intriguing and... Uh, that's good so I'm looking forward to episode 4 tomorrow like I say we're doing this daily we're catching up uh, so like and subscribe let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below we'll be back tomorrow thanks very much for watching guys we'll see you next time